Let's now focus on the individual elements of the canvas, starting with value proposition. Value proposition is not an idea or a product. It is about solving a problem or providing what a customer needs or aspires to have. A value proposition is a promise of value to be delivered and acknowledge and a belief from the customer that value will be delivered and experienced. A value proposition can apply to an entire organization or parts thereof or customer accounts or products or services. Creating a value proposition is part of business strategy. The bottom line is satisfying customers is the source of sustainable value creation. By creating a value proposition, a company will be able to understand why their products or services should be treated importantly by customers for which they are willing to pay. Very simply put, value proposition is a reason why a customer comes to you and pays you money instead of going to the competition or using an alternative. For example, Starbucks is the number one purveyor of coffee in the world. They educate and enhance the best possible customer experience. The goal of Starbucks is to become the third place in our daily lives, that is, home, office, and Starbucks. Now that is the value proposition of Starbucks. The next question is to answer who are your customers? Customers with purchasing power are the ones who need or aspire to own or use the product or service that you're selling. Next is to identify the key activities. What does it take to deliver the product or service to the customer as promised in the value proposition? How does a product or service get developed, manufactured, produced and finally delivered to the customer? You will need to identify each and every activity from producing, selling, delivering the product and finally customer post sales service to maintenance if any. A good example for this is Nike, the global shoe brand. The company excels in the design and marketing of shoes and leaves production to its outsourcing partners. For Nike, design and marketing are the key activities. Now let's look at channels. Your product or service should be made visible to the identified customers. Identifying the right channels to reach the customers is very crucial. Customer segments could be of the following types. Mass market, for example, consumer electronics, or niche market, example, luxury accessories. Or it could be the distributed type, for instance, Amazon sells cloud services and also anything under the sun from books to movies to music. It could be of the segmented type, for example, retail banks segment their customers into high net worth individuals or salaried employees. Or it could be of the multi-sided platform type, for example, Google has advertisers on the one hand and its users on the other. Nespresso, the coffee brand, a subsidiary of Nestle, has a unique channel strategy. It is an idea of exclusiveness and personal touch. Nespresso has fostered a passionate global community with some of its most discerning coffee connoisseurs. Nespresso's club members value the brand's innovative spirit and dedication to quality, style and service. They have made Nespresso a part of their lifestyle. Club members order their coffee capsules through an exclusive website. Now let's look at customer relationships. Customer relationship is all about attracting the right customers, retaining and growing with them. Accenture, the global consulting giant, has an exceptional focus on client relationships. Client centricity is in fact one of the core values of the company. Accenture employs account managers and client account leads who work closely with the clients to create custom solutions. Customer relationships can be high touch or low touch. High touch relationships are where individualized personal assistance is given to the customer. And in low touch relationships, Customers make use of self-service or automated service. Now let's look at revenue streams. The revenue streams building block represents the cash a company generates from each customer segment. Asset sale, usage fee, licensing, subscription fees and leasing are the most common streams of revenues earned by companies. 
A business model can involve two different types of revenue streams. Transaction revenues resulting from one-time customer payments and recurring revenues resulting from ongoing payments to either deliver a value proposition to the customer or provide post-purchase customer support. In the online world, there is a revenue model called the freemium model. In this model, some basic version of the product or service is offered free and a premium is charged for the advanced version. The premium model could be feature limited as in only certain sets of features are available to the customers for free or it could be time limited, it could be capacity limited, seat limited or customer class limited. LinkedIn, Skype and a host of online companies have adopted the freemium model. Now let's move on to the key resources. Key resources allow an enterprise to create and offer a value proposition, reach markets, maintain relationships with customer segments, and finally earn revenues. Key resources can be physical, financial, intellectual, or human. Key resources can be owned or leased by the company or acquired from key partners. Even brand image can be a great key resource. For the Virgin Group, for instance, their brand image helps the company diversify into different industries. So the brand is a key resource for them. Moving on to key partners. Companies create alliances to optimize their business models and reduce risk. We can distinguish between four different types of partnerships. Strategic alliances between non-competitors, co-opetition, a strategic partnership between competitors or joint ventures to create and develop new businesses or a buyer and supplier relationship to assure reliable supplies. A good example for co-opetition is Samsung and Apple in the smartphone industry. Samsung sells flash drives and screens to Apple. Moving on to cost structure. The cost structure describes all costs incurred to operate a business model. Cost structures have the following key characteristics. Fixed costs are the costs that remain the same irrespective of the volume of goods or services produced. Variable costs are costs that vary proportionately with the volume of goods or services produced. Economies of scale are cost advantages that a company enjoys as the volume of output increases. Economies of scope are cost advantages that a company enjoys as the scope of operations increase. Walmart, as you know, focuses relentlessly on cost structures to gain competitive advantage. The cost it saves from its operations is passed on as a benefit to the customer and this becomes the cornerstone of the everyday low price promise of Walmart.